Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast. And uh, right now, we'll be talking at uh, talking about the ASU strike that may or may not hold. We don't have the facts of the case yet, as uh, the ASU national chairman is yet to make a statement about it. But uh, what we do know for sure is that in an interview with Newsmen, we saw the ASU chairman in the Federal University of Technology, MENA, saying that there might be a strike because the deadline, December 31st deadline, given to ASU to implement certain agreements they reached before calling off the strike on December 23rd was yet to be reached. And joining us now to discuss this is uh, Dr. Unma Elebara. She's an educationist. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, uh, ASU striked for, for nine months and uh, they eventually called off the strike in December, less than three weeks ago. And right now they're calling for another strike, maybe? What do you think about this? How does this strike you? Yeah, it is more than shocking to think that when Nigerians have heaved a sigh of relief that our universities are reopening as a result of ASU's declaration that the strike is over, they are starting another phase. The ASU strike is now becoming a pandemic, which cure is yet to come. Okay. Um, do, do you see reasons with ASU why, you know, the strike might be resumed? Because according to the chairman, the, the strike was only suspended, uh, not called off completely. Uh, but do you, you know, maybe also see reasons why it might be necessary for them to go back on strike, uh, seeing that the government has not been able to fulfill the agreements and uh, its own part of the agreements uh, that they reached? The uh, federal government should learn to be more credible and trusted in making promises and pronouncements. All its agreements, pronouncements, negotiations and decisions must be squarely measured and weighed to ensure prompt and timely implementation. Past experiences show that a good number of government promises and pledges keep shifting and reneging so often that government is deemed unserious, so unfortunate. Yeah. So, so I mean, so if Asu says that they, you know, are likely to go back, you know, on, on strike, uh, do you, you know, agree that it might be the right decision, seeing that the government has uh, failed to fulfil that part of its bargain? You know, it's, it's like strike is the only language this government understands. So I support us to go back on strike so that their needs will be met. We can't be toying with the glorious destinies of our children. This government is playing with the, is toying with the education of our children and it's not in the best interest of our children. Mm. I'm uh, still talking about uh, uh, kids, so to speak. I mean, as a court of the strike, you know, just when, you know, it seems that the federal government was going to reopen schools, they've ordered schools to reopen January 18th, uh, nationwide tertiary institutions, secondary schools as well. So students were excited. Lots of people who were to write their final year exams, you know, they couldn't do that. You know, there was just this blockage, so to speak. They couldn't further, you know, with their lives because of school. And now the strike may happen again. How do you think this is affecting a students, their academics, their hopes and dreams, their aspirations, and, you know, their emotions as well. You see, I can bet you that for the nearly one year strike by ASU, at least 40% of the undergraduates are no longer going to be university materials. Having joined ugly and dangerous groups and taken to all manner of crimes, because, and I don't mind, they say it's a devil's workshop, there are, there are serious worries to parents, family members, and society at large. They may no longer know where their books are and have become too raw to go back to the universities. Many have indulged in money-making ventures and others emotionally traumatized and confused. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, pretty sad picture you've painted. Um, so may, maybe not 40%, um, you know, have gone into, you know, these vices that you've mentioned. Uh, but, you yeah. know, also speak, you know, to us about the uh, mood of, um, of uh, the likely mood of lecturers, uh, you know, seeing these back and forth with the government. Uh, it doesn't seem, you know, like it's, it's ending anytime soon. 
And of course, a lecturer has been owed six months you know, pay because of course the IPPIS that they didn't sign. Um, how is it likely you know, to affect the lecturers, university lecturers across the country? Yeah, it's affecting them adversely. Government could have met ASU's demand instrumentally over the years past. But in this short-sightedness and dictatorial tendencies, allow ASU's demand and expectations to accumulate so much that it is now seen as a Herculean task to solve. Corruption and misplaced priorities in government brought about our economic woes, which crippled the education and other sectors of the economy. We are in the recession, but still having high cost of governance and frivolities. Look at our ministers and lawmakers, still earning jumbo allowances and provocative remunerations. May God help us too, because we can no longer continue in a journey of one step forward and 10 steps backwards. Our children are bearing the brunt. When two elephants suffer, the grasses. When two elephants fight, the grasses suffer. Mm. The children, of course, our own children are the ones suffering. Because they are, they are abroad studying. They are not, knowing, they are not feeling the pains our children are feeling in this country. Well, Doctor, we do know that uh, when ASU called off the strike in December, it was based on a, so to speak, conditional suspension oh. you know they, they placed uh, conditions certain conditions that's uh, paying the salaries you know they, they also added that they had to adopt the federal government had to adopt the university transparency and accountability solution utas they say ippis wasn't working for them they had to pay them three months old salaries they had to pay them and uh, academic allowances they had to fund public universities they put out all these conditions and they said the federal government had to you know do some of these or you know reach some of these by december 31st do you think that three-week gap, three-week deadline was, was too short for the federal government to do all of this? After, you know, this is something they've been dragging for years. And uh, why do you think the government would have assented to something in such a short time frame? You know, does, doesn't it uh, kind of back them in a corner? Even if this government is given the whole time in the world, nothing much will happen because it is still playing politics with the education of our children until the right people are brought into the education minister, until we start doing the right thing, until we overhaul the educational se sector, we'll still be mo moving in circles. Mm -hmm. We need total overhaul, reform. In fact, I, let's declare a state of emergency in the education sector. Yeah. Um, well, it's a, it's a lot you know, to take in at the same time. Uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts on the uh, government and um, its interest in uh, education? You've already stated that that might, you know, be needing um, a state of emergency. Um, mm. Is there ways that you feel ASU can make its point to the federal government to ensure that uh, the government does better? Because strikes don't seem to be working. And like you've also said, as the children and the students that are suffering, um, is there any other ways that you feel that this message can be put through to the federal government um, that would ensure that they actually take um, um, what necessary steps are needed? Yeah, we need dialogue. Governments should come together again with us and arrive at a compromise. All these things we are doing are not helping our children. They are not helping us. Let's ask you come shift a little bit, as uh, federal government also shift a little bit so that things can work fine and our children go back to schools. That's well, my thinking. All right. Um, Dr. Ma Olebara. Yes, just one, one more question before we let you go. Uh, the, this story we, we found on the Punch newspaper, I haven't seen this anywhere else, but it's, it's saying that the University of Benin and the Ambrosari University AAU uh, may begin the strike soon. If this is confirmed and the University of Benin and AAU joins the strike, how, how, is it, how likely is it that other states will follow suit? You see, everything in Nigeria is infectious, especially in the negative. It starts somewhere and singly, only to spread generally. I see this spreading to other states, and I think it should spread so that the federal government will listen. 
because they are not listening to us. If every other state joins, I think it will make an impact. Hmm. All right. Thank you. That's the All right. Thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, for your time that you've shared with us this morning. Thanks for joining us in this conversation. Uh, we're Thanks forced for to hold, uh, bring you pleasure. in again. I appreciate this. All right. Good morning to you. Um, Thank you. Let me pick your brain on this, Osaragi. If you are a student uh, back in India, we both attended the University of Benin, and obviously there were strikes during my time that uh, halted my ed uh, education to some certain degree. But if you were in the shoes of the students at the moment, mm -hmm. how how are you going to feel? Well, I mean. So th there's always going to be mixed reactions or emotions towards this, you know, because, you know, there's, you know, a part of you that will want to graduate in four years. There's a part of you that wants to finish your medical school in five years and, you know, move on with your life. And so it will definitely be annoying, you know, that you have, you know, an extra year and another extra year uh, for no reason besides, you know, the striking. But um, there's also the realization that students going through Nigerian universities have, from what I would rate, a very, very poor teaching environment. Um, the logistics that are necessary, the laboratories. I mean, you look at how much Nigerian students excel when they move outside Nigeria. When, when they, they have all in, the tools exactly, and they, 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 they go and do extremely well in the UK, in Canada, in the US. Um, graduate with you know first classes left and right, you know, and that, that's exactly so exactly. Much. So you know, it must also hurt as a Nigerian student having to go through a university and look at the level of decay that you have to deal with in four straight years of learning, and then eventually you come out. And they, they make mockery of Nigerian students a lot, you know, that after you come out of Nigerian university, you still need to go write other exams to ensure that or to Oof. prove that you are capable or you even know what you're talking about. There's a lot of graduates these days, and I'm sure you know, I can't write their names. A lot of graduates that can't write a full sentence without blunders. There are a lot of graduates that can't have a simple conversation without, you know, blunders. Can't talk about computers, even if they studied computer engineering. Can't of course, the medical school maybe, you know, you know, is a lot tighter than that. But um, students must have mixed re emotions towards this. You will want to go back to school and finish your four-year course. But at the same time, you should be able to understand the reason ASU is going on strike. The reason why they want a better education you know, system uh, for you. The reason why they want you to have better laboratories. They want you to have better computers. They want you to have a better learning environment. Um, so, look, so, look at, so it's basically like the, the, the students of this set this time basically paying the price. Then if the federal government you know, you know, bulges, then laying the way or pre, tr blazing the trail for future students to have smooth, easy education. Yes. Would you say that, you know, is, that you know, is Even if, is? yes, you, know, you would, as a Nigerian, always have doubts in your mind that the federal government will actually you know, do what is necessary. Uh, there's always going to be the political aspects of it. There's going to be delays. There's going to be, you know, negotiations that have gone on for months and months and months. I don't know why it takes that long to negotiate uh, something with, you know, that is this serious. So, um, best of luck to the students. I know that they feel bad. I know it must be, you know, yes. draining for them. Same thing with the lecturers. Going months and months without salary must be really draining. But if it is for the best in our educational um, sector, then mm. you know, the price needs to be paid. Indeed. Now I see why our private universities are cashing out, so to speak. Absolutely. All right, so uh, that conversation over. Let's now head to the next one on electricity tariff. Not many people are happy about this, and uh, we'll have that conversation with an economic expert after this. Mr. Agbola on Day will be joining us um, with somebody else. Good morning to you. Stay with us.